Welcome back to the dopest show. You won't get sick of. I'm Spencer. This is Sasha. I spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9, 2010. Got a lot of stories about the dumb stuff I did to get put in prison. I've also got a lot of stories about the crazy stuff that happened while I was in prison. And God forbid you end up in prison. You want to make some of the same mistakes I made. So, uh, Pinto's coming down tomorrow. I didn't think it was going to happen. I actually lost sleep. I talked to him yesterday evening. Um, but I go to bed early and, um, yeah, woke up like four or five, been up since then. I just thought something's going to go wrong. Something ain't going to just talk to him. He's coming down. So I made for a good handful of wild videos, some of his stories. I mean, yeah, see, Kingpin at 23, 1.2 million cash, paying off four cops to hit his competition. I mean, he, he's got some real stuff. So that, that'll be fun and interesting. But anyway. Uh, some scrambling for the stuff that I got to get ready to do tomorrow. So if I'm not as responsive in the comments or anything, I apologize for that. But to be honest, I, I, I swore something was going to go wrong and wasn't going to happen. But he's coming down, so I've got a little bit of scrambling to do. <laughs> you know, um, so anyway, General Pat and AKA Santa Claus. So when I got there, this guy had a big old beard, like Santa Claus, big old grayish white beard, glasses and buzz cut head and no tattoos and during the time that I was there uh you know when I first got there I didn't talk to him much um didn't talk to a lot of people minding my own business I worked out despite getting laughed at in my face because I was so scrawny and people looked at me like as a waste of time but as I started to put on a little bit of muscle and get myself together and you know people see I wasn't with the same foolishness as a lot of the other young people I made some friends I made some friends with the older convicts and you know I asked a lot of questions I knew I was going to go to prison I knew there was no getting around that so I asked as many questions to educate myself on what to do what not to do you know as I could I'd been in jail three times I think for that year um just you know through drug court and that stuff but it was on the county jail it was regional jail it was a serious pod. I mean, it was fighting all the time. All the time. Kobe wasn't in there. My friend Kobe, a big Kobe, you know, common story, just named Kobe, but I mean, he's a big old dude, 300, 320 pounds. <laughs> but he wasn't in the pod. Nobody I knew was in the pod except for this, uh, this, this crazy uh, drug addict named Spider that I used to deal with. He'd always, he knew when I had to go do my drug tests in drug court. You had to go once a week and he'd call and he'd listen for the color code. He wasn't even on color code, but he'd listen to color code every night to tell if I was at probation. I'd have what I call a trick bag, trick bag, just a little dash something. And he'd, every time it's in, Spencer, can you help me out? And I'd be like, I got you, Spider. But aside from him, I didn't know many people. Came friends with that guy, Red, giant dude, looked like he could have played NFL. And Patton, he's someone I ended up becoming friends with too. Um, he installed conveyor belts. It's like the manager foreman or whatever for um, crew that installed conveyor belts all over the place. Had a wild story. He said he wouldn't eat sweet baby Ray sauce because it's just powder. They pour water in and it stirs it up. So it's just powder mixed in with some stuff. It's what he said. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what he said. So, um, but anyway. He um kept getting fatter and fatter, fatter and fatter, fat as a bullfrog. He done got fat, and he got an umbilical hernia. That's when your any turns into an Audi because you get fat too quick. And you know, some people gain weight over time, and you know, it looks normal. But when people gain so much weight so quick, it, it looks like a pregnant belly on it <laughs> for real. When people get that, and he'd sit out there. At the, that big old belly hanging over the rail, just leaning over the rail, watching TV half the day. Um, good dude, though. He told me he'd done like eight years in federal prison. That was back when you get programs and all that other stuff. And it had been years before, but ultimately what had happened was he sold a little bit of pot on the side. And he met his two sons. Uh, and I can't remember if he was giving it to them, they were giving it to him. Something happened, but uh i think his sons were giving it to him i think he was there to buy two pounds of pot if i remember correctly i might have it mixed up he said he threw threw it under the car and they arrested him so he got set up by his own sons and he's like 55 years old the maximum sentence in virginia i believe a half pound to five pounds is six months to five years and he went to court. He hadn't been in trouble since he was, his last conviction, he was in his 20s. He's in his 50s now. And the judge, who was an 
idiot judge swore to give out a million years, which I've just disagreed with on so many levels, just to make it a competition how many years you can give out. Um, you know, he said, well, can I get a program or something? Or he said, I haven't been in trouble in 20 years. And he said, the judge laughed and he said, Mr. Patton, you have not been caught in 20 years. And I've talked about this before, and I'm going to talk about it again. I know I've mentioned this because it bothers me that bad that they do this to this man. And he said, well, can I get some kind of a program or something? Please, I'm diabetic. I'm in my mid-50s. And he said, I have a program for you, Mr. Patton. It's called the State Penitentiary, and you'll be spending five years there. Five years, maximum sentence for two pounds, set up by his own sons. He's with this woman, uh, Susie. Now, Susie was... Uh, She's like Filipino or something. Like she, she came over here from overseas. She wasn't born in America. She had a, a heavy accent, and he'd be on the phone with her, and cussing. Now, now, gee, dang it, Susie, I, I told that Susie, <laughs> and we, we get tickled off of him because when he first got in there, there's a whole lot of that, you know, him cussing on this phone. Uh, it was, you know, they stuck together as much as I know. He said that she called him. Uh, Miko, because you couldn't say his name, uh, Michael, his name Michael Patton. But anyway, yeah, um, he got fat as a bullfrog, and you know, he started, he got tired of being fat, so he started running up and down these stairs multiple times a day, just up and down, up and down, up and down. He went, probably, he probably 260, 270, he got down to about 210. All that was all flat with him. He, he thought he was going to do some sit-ups and tighten it up, but once you expand it so much, it's kind of hard to get that back. But anyway, he told me, I asked him a whole bunch of questions about prison. He stuck to himself, didn't bother people. He talked to me one day, and he was just basically saying, you know, good job on what you've done. He said, you stayed away from these crash dummy idiot young people that just make noise and act stupid for no reason all day. And he said, you pulled yourself up by the bootstraps is what I remember he said that specifically. He said, you, you came in here just a stone cold junkie, and I was. I mean, that's what it was. I was 135 pounds, couldn't do two pull ups. Figured I'd be skinny, I could do pull ups, man. I was skinny fat at 135. When your body's that starved, when you've starved yourself and done yourself that wrong, muscle comes back pretty quick if you start eating good and you no know, working out. Ain't a good bit of fat, too. But anyway, I asked him a bunch of questions about prison, and it was funny because I came back from getting bad news one day. I've talked about this too, but it, it still trips me out. It still trips me out. It's worth mentioning again. It was Patton, and it was this dude, a black dude named Benji, who's known as a street fighter in Franklin County. And I came back, and it, I, I looked like this, but like you could see something was off with me. See something was real off with me. And, uh, you know, they pulled me up in the room, and they said, basically were telling me that I need to... Uh, that, that I'm not meant to be in prison, I'm not like these other people, both of them. You know, old Santa Claus and then Benji, who's short, stocky, overweight, black dude, Franklin County Street Fighter. They're, they're opposite dude, but they were both in there basically yelling at me, telling me I need to do what I need to do to get out of there because I wasn't meant to be in there, wasn't meant to be around these people. I was a nice guy, you know, I'm genuine with how I am and stuff like that. And I did learn to stick up for myself really good when I was in there. But I'm like, listen, y'all, I said, can't tell you the specifics because there were so many people coming out of the World War to testify me that weren't even there. And they've come and apologized since to the people that were coerced to say they saw me give drugs to somebody that led to an overdose. Uh, and they came to me and they apologized. And they said, they told us, say, you did this, sign the paper, or we go to prison. And they told, the one guy told my mom, but I, did, I told them I didn't see them do that. They said, sign it or you're going to prison, okay? So I didn't tell them the details, you know, everything that's going on. But I basically said, and I was getting, the person who did sell it, I was getting, I, I don't know for certain, but I know friends of that person were basically telling me, you're young, you ain't been in trouble before, you need to take this, uh, take this charge for them because it'll do them a whole lot worse and this, this, and that. I talked to my lawyer, and you know he said uh, he said you know it's a 20-year mandatory minimum on each one. It's 40 mandatory minimum unless you combine the two together. You're going to do 17 on that. And I'm like, but I didn't do this. I didn't. I didn't do this. You know. But it just tripped me out. You know, they pulled me and told me I wasn't like people told me, and I'm like, no, y'all don't understand what's happening. I'm getting snitched on. In my opinion, this is what happened. I'm getting told on by the people 
that did what they're telling that I did. And um, I, it was a stressful time. It was a stressful time. Luckily that night I did CPR mouth to mouth on this person kept him alive. Called called 911. I've talked about that too. And he saved my life back, Brian Goble did, and another friend that was there. But anyway, um, you know, I knew I was going to prison. I got a lot of advice from both of them. But there was something funny that happened one day, Patton. Um, they uh, had these heart healthy trays. It's turkey sandwich, loaded, loaded. I mean, you, they'd sell those, you know, three, four dollars sometimes. It's a loaded turkey sandwich. And it, there was a guy who went, I think he got beat up. Yeah, I think he got beat up, sent to another pot. Or maybe he went home. They were bringing his tray to our unit because they have so many heart healthy trays. Then they have the regular trays, which you go up one at a time to get the heart healthy ones. They bring them out and they put them on the table. Patton was going out there and he was getting the heart healthy tray for the guy that was no longer there anymore. I mean, even when he was running them stairs, he's still a fat boy at heart. He liked, he liked eating that food. And this guy, Nick, fat Nick, uh, young, he's probably the youngest, he was two or three years older than me, came in there, you know, trying so hard to sound street and sound gangster, and he had a few tattoos, doing six months for, uh, he, he was doing the minimum sentence for the same thing Patton got five years for, for selling weed. And I was just asking people about sentence, and I didn't know anything about it. All I saw on the paper with my state charges was five to 40 is what, it, it carries apparently that doesn't mean dick apparently uh five to 40 is just what it carries but my guidelines were like seven months to like 14 months or 15 months was what my guidelines were i ended up pretty much getting <laughs> the high end of the guidelines because i got i spent about 13 months in jail okay seven months the bottom 15 months high. but if i just got 13 months that would have been you know a little bit higher, but I got 13 months and drug court. What drug court means is if I if I don't complete drug court, then I get more time on top of that. So it was heavy for the thing, but it got me out on bond for the federal charges. That was green. My lawyer came up with, but um, yeah, Pat and uh, that, that I got off on a little rant there. But Nick, I was asking people. He's like, you got caught selling heroin, dog. You're screwed. You're going away for 10. And I really believed, I thought, shoot, better start learning this prison stuff, going away for 10 on East State. And that was before I even knew about the federal charges, even had a clue that, you know, I hope they were going to try to, uh, they OJ'd me, basically, you know, for all the sins of my past. They put together a narrative, and they really believed it. And they basically made people agree with the narrative. And everybody was testifying, everybody was testifying on me. Everybody, people that weren't there. And two people that were there, the one guy whose life I said that was the key one, because it wouldn't matter. Say I didn't do it. You got everybody else who was there. The people, person did do it. Everybody else saying that. In my opinion, that's what happened. Because I mean, it's too weird. But I got notes from somebody who's friends of that person, telling me, I, "Yeah, I told that." And you know, he was telling me. He says that's bull. He said no. He says you do not take a charge. For somebody else he says they're going to try to tell you this this and that and it ain't a big deal why do you think they're getting you to try to take the charge and yeah um basically talk sense into me and it basically i didn't have doing it it all just kind of played itself out now brian goble i believe he's passed it's really sad on his facebook and everything last time i looked on there it looked like he had brain cancer or something like that i'd known him for two days it wasn't a friend of mine a friend of the dealers who sold the was it the one guy passed off of if somebody overdoses and they live like if I sell you a $10 bag right now and you call 911 because your heart's fast you ain't never done any crack before meth before you do you, you do some of that that I gave you $10 worth if an ambulance comes and responds and you say my chest is tight even though you weren't really having an overdose even though you would have been fine in a couple hours by law that's considered an overdose as 20 mandatory minimum if the feds pick it up and it's all political it's all political on whether the feds pick it up or not i mean it really is a lot of times it's bigger cases but like you know i mean i had been a dealer in my past but i quit dealing because i knew i had warrants out when i went to when i went to jail i had 20 dollars in my pocket the person that sold the dope had like two three thousand in their pocket they could have just looked at how much money we came in with when we went to jail, and they would have known 
well, shoot, this guy ain't the deal. He ain't rolling another. He, he got a, a, a dusty 20 in his pocket. This other person got all this. But anyway, Patton advised me a whole lot through that, you know, you know, just talked me and told me a whole bunch of prison stuff. But with that tray, Nick, Fat Nick, the one who kept telling me he was going to get all this time, and it, it tore me up, tore my stomach up. I sat there and I thought, okay, well, it'll be all right. I'll be out, you know, by the time I'm mid-30s, mid-40s. I'll get really fit so then I can get a decent-looking woman and maybe start a family. I was making the best of it. I'm, I'm an eternal optimist. I mean, even when they taught me it's 20 mandatory minimum, I was thinking, well, I'm, I'll be at my 40s, you know. Eternal optimist for something I didn't do. I was ready to accept it because I know when the feds get you, they get you. And if you don't accept a deal, you get like triple. I knew people in there that were offered 10 year deals that got 30, 35 years. And uh, anyway, that guy Nick kept yelling, He isn't here anymore. And the guards heard it and they took that tray back. Patton was mad. This guy John, John liked to prance around with his shirt off. Now in jail, you wouldn't catch me with my shirt off. In prison, you wouldn't. Until last few months, I tried to get a little bit tan. Before I went home, but I'm not prancing around a bunch in front of men, no shirt on. Um, he do his muscle like that, and he said something. Somebody like dared me go tell Pat, and Patton's my friend. I said, I walked in, I laughed. I said, Hey, Pat, you gonna go whoop neck for telling on him? And he said, Oh, that's who told on me. That's who told on the trays? And then he, you, you heard his flip flops. He didn't even put his Jackie Chan's on. The Jackie Chan's are those little prison shoes, no so. It sounded like a, a a baby elephant or a car with two flat tires. Thut, 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 thut. And Nick, fat Nick, you know, uh, uh, he's going bald. He's 23 and he's going bald up top trying to talk, you know, ghetto fabulous. And I knew there were these two twins in there, these two brothers. We had one of the twins in the unit. Now, he, he was street, white kid, Italian, but he talked ghetto as could be. But he grew up ghetto. Nick, Nick was perpetrating a fraud. And there are a couple issues of that but you know there were a couple issues that I saw in jail that made me realize just because people look like they might be a little bit tough might look like this they're not Patton stormed in that room like a little baby elephant all his little flunky friends there were three of them sitting there and he was sitting on the bunk they didn't do nothing they rolled out all the ones I got your back I got your back all that stuff didn't have his back Patton snatched his boy up by his neck had his head up against the wall. He said, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. He smacked him up. Everything. Didn't do a thing back. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he uh, ended up going off to prison. As far as I know, he's still with that woman, Susie. His diabetic having a lot of issues. I'm glad that he got fit and got himself back together. You know, he didn't mess with a lot of people. Now, I talk about <laughs> when you first get somewhere, it's best not doing any deals with the trays until you know who everybody is. Now, I've been there for a little bit, and there a lot of trays, I couldn't eat that meat patty. And they gave that meat patty like three, four times a week with a sprinkle of this, sprinkle of that, call it Southbury steak, or some other trash. It was the same soggy football-shaped meat patty with the mashed potatoes with the instant grit. And, uh, and um, he, we had a deal with commissary for, you know, those meat patty trays. People just giving a ramen noodle for them, so I sold those to them for a buck a piece. Anytime it's that soggy meat patty, I couldn't do it. Like, it was... Barely, it's like warm. You know when stuff is, it would have been better if it was cold than tasting like it was just barely warmed up. Like it's like, like you want to gag when you eat it. But yeah, I had uh, sold him those trays. But uh, yeah, he he was a good friend of mine. Um, that was one I just, you know, he's on my mind. I tried looking him up since I've been out. Um, he's a good friend. You know, kind of like a big brother type deal in there. Had a couple then with the old comic. I didn't get along with a lot of the, you know, young wannabe thug people in there and all that stuff. You know, um, Kobe. Now, once Kobe was in there, once Kobe and Mike, Mike's Kobe's uh, best friend. They always been best friends. They've always been like attached to him. Once they they ended up being sillies in there. They were roommates on the street. But man, once they got in there, we were cutting up. Oh, we were cutting up. But before that, didn't know anybody besides Spider. Spider, somebody I'll have to do one on. He looked like a straight crackhead, uh, peanut butter colored teeth. But he played college basketball at West Virginia. And this white guy with peanut butter colored teeth, salt and pepper hair, he talked like this. You would guess he was a crackhead from the street. He'd get in there and he'd play basketball. He'd cross them people up, you know, have them tripping over their own feet. He'd play. Looked like a dope thing with a big old bit, but he'd get up there and he'd 
he played basketball. But anyway, Patton, Patton was a good friend of mine. He's friends with my silly too. I had a silly peanut. What he went by, peanut had some of the funniest sayings too. Um, that was my first silly in there. Ended up moving down there with the dude Snooky. Uh, Snooky, it's not the same person as in federal prison. Wasn't the punk? Snooky was a ghetto dude from Franklin County. I mean, he's black, but I mean, his skin was whiter than mine. He talked light skin. I mean, he's basically white, you know. But I don't know if he's albino or what. Well, no, nah, he had regular hair. But anyway, he's funny. But unfortunate nickname. I believe Jersey Shore came on that same year for the first time. I don't know. It might have. Unfortunate nickname to have everybody call you Snooky since you were about this tall. Then Snooky represents, you know, Jersey Shore. I mean, that's, that's unfortunate for him. But anyway, Peanut. You, you'd tell him, if you, you'd actually say the word, I don't cuss on here, and he'd say, make your mouth sore. And you'd say, if somebody'd say, if you again to him, he'd say, uh, make your whole sore. <laughs> and, he, and somebody'd say something, you know how people say like, yeah, make me smack out of you just joking around, like people joke too much. He'd say, well, I can't stop you from jumping, but I dang sure can control how hard you hit the ground. He's a country guy. He had to come back for everything. That's the thing. You in prison? There's so much crap talk. I got I got quick with some of these lines, these little one-liners and stuff. You know, uh, somebody says something asleep. You say hey, like they ain't like they think they get you. You'd be like, hey, shoot, you better do some more push-ups. Um, just some of them little one-liners. Anyway, I'm I'm running on fumes. I woke up at like four or five this morning. I thought he ain't gonna make it down. I done told everybody's gonna be here. He ain't gonna be here. But Pinto's coming. Pinto's coming. Lord have mercy, he's coming. Um, you know, he's from Philly. He's living in Virginia now. The wedding ring he has um, on his hand and his wife's hand, they got married in the visitation room of Petersburg Low. And my mom, he, he, was, he was a ticket man. He was the gambler man, Pinto. He's a genius with that type of stuff, numbers and all that. And he um, saved up enough money to pay me a whole, 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 whole bunch of mackerel for those wedding rings, you know, I was happy to do it. Make sure it was basically, it was basically a cost. You know, what I mean, this guy's like brother to me. Um, but it's cool that they have the rings that came from mom's store and everything else. But Casey's dad, where he runs at Buffalo Farm at Paint Bank, might take him out there. They see the buffalo and some of that stuff. There's some wild stuff out there. I ain't never seen anything like that. It was from Rono. We didn't have no. Um, I, I barely saw a deer. You know what I mean? <laughs> So an arrow went out there, it's some wild stuff. But anyway, if you like the video, press the like button. If not, that's 22 minutes and 39 seconds of your life in which you'll never get back. Had to just shoot a quick one out. Got to do some running around um, today. Get everything ready for tomorrow. Um, it's going to be great. I mean, I'm really, ha I'm just happy to see my friend. I mean, it's, it's been a long time. I quit talking to everybody because they're freaking birds. <laughs> um, but anyway, the birds hear that drives me crazy um there's one on top of the house the other day i smacked the wall i saw it fly off but anyway um yeah I had to get this out I had to just do one real quick no i talked about some elements of certain things that i'd talked about about Patton before but i mean five years for two pounds of weed that's something that's absolutely draconian and stupid and insane and especially now since in virginia it's basically decriminalized under a certain amount and you're allowed to grow four plants per household I ain't grown nothing. Um, I, I, you know, I, I might at some point. I do a video that I'm good at that. I'm good at that. I, I got really good at that. I, I don't like it though. Don't like smoke it. Don't like to eat it. Ain't done it in a decade. Just don't like it. But I love growing it. Um, so anyway, if you like the video, press the like button. Sorry. When I when I'm behind on sleep, I, I rant a little bit, as you might have noticed. Uh, also, I got a second channel. I'll leave. I'll try to remember to pin the comment up top. Uh, I cuss on there, just say whatever's on my mind on there, and uh, be adding more to that. Sorry, there won't be as much today. I don't think I will try to do a little bit more, get a little more up. But I got some running around to do. I wasn't expecting, wasn't expecting tomorrow. He's going to have, he's coming down with his wife and his uh, his two babies. One's two, and one's like zero. One's like six months old. So you know, got some, got some accommodations. Got to try to, try to get ready. Hope y'all like the video.